Today, we're going to replace the power supply on our Solval SV06 Plus, removing this off-brand one and putting a name-brand Meanwell on there. So, let's get to it. So considering I've gotten many comments on our YouTube channel and people asking on our live streams about the SV06 Plus and the power supply, I figured it was time to do a video on it since this is the first mod I've been doing to my printer. Now in general, I personally don't trust these off-brand power supplies on my machines because a lot of times I am printing with them over long periods of time and I want as much reliability as possible. In general, I just don't trust these off-brand power supplies, but I do trust a nice brand called Meanwell. They've been around since the 80s, and they know how to make a good power supply. So one thing I do want to preface this, because I know there's going to be people leaving comments, is the power supply that comes with the Soval SV06 is labeled as a 500 watt power supply. But in terms of reliability, I don't trust that it'll actually put out 500 watts for very long. Just during the initial unboxing and doing the test print, I did smell a similar smell that reminded me of the one that came with my Ender 5 Plus, which oddly had the same off-brand power supply in it when I got it. Now, considering there are no 500 watt power supplies in the same form factor, the next thing I wanted to do was check how much power do we actually need? Because a lot of these Chinese companies like to put power supplies with large wattage labels on them, but the printer may not actually need it, nor will the power supply actually perform well at those ratings on the sticker. So after doing some testing and heating the printer up with all the heaters on, the motors engaged, and the fans on, we determined that the SV06 has an average amp load in terms of everything being on of around 13 amps, and the meanwhile 350 watt power supply that we carry is rated at 14.6 amps, which is well within the power supply's capabilities. Now the other thing to know is that once you're at temperature, the power supply load actually drops off considerably to around the two to three amp range, and this is for most 3D printers. So with all that out of the way, I'm going to go from start to finish, taking the old power supply off, fitting our power supply and the custom cover we designed, and reinstalling it on the printer. If you guys want to get one of these power supply kits, there's a link in the video description for the SV06 power supply conversion kit that includes the power supply and our custom cover. I'm going to show you guys how to do that right now. So the first thing we need to do when replacing our power supply on the SV06 Plus is go ahead and turn off the power and unplug the printer. So the stock power supply comes off with the screw here, and there's one down here. As you see, my gantry's in the way, so we can just go ahead and move it up until we have access to the screw. We're going to go ahead and take these screws out here to get the power supply off. Now we're going to take the top one off. As soon as this one comes off, the power supply is going to be loose, so make sure to grab it. Set aside the two screws we took out. We're going to need these to put the new power supply in. Disconnect the three pin plug from the printer. And now we should have the separate power supply unit. So the next thing we need to do is take the four screws out of the stock power supply. There's two on the side and two on the back. Now the cover will come off. Go ahead and pull the connector through the bottom. And just take note of where the connections go. On the power supply here, you can see with the three pin plug, we've got the red wire going to V plus, black wire going to V minus, and then the yellow wire going to the ground terminal. On the AC side, which are these thinner wires that go to the receptacle here, we have the red wire going to line or L, black goes to N for neutral, and then the little yellow wire here is for ground. So we're going to go ahead and disconnect all of these, and these will get put onto the new power supply. Last thing we need to do before we install the new one is we have to take these two screws out to remove the receptacle from the stock housing. This will be put into the new housing. Take the receptacle out. And now we're done with the stock enclosure and power supply. So now we're going to take our new enclosure housing. We're going to put the 
DC power lines up through the bottom hole here, all the way until the plug hits the opening. Then we're going to take the stock receptacle and put it through the opening on the new housing. And then we're going to go ahead and put the screws that we took out of this from the old one into the new one. So we have that installed. Now we need to put the power supply in here. You want to make sure that you have these wires correct. So if we look down in here, you can see we have the wires for the AC side and we have the wires for the DC side. Do not get these mixed up. Seriously, don't get these mixed up. So if we look here, the thinner wires are the AC lines and the thicker wires that are all bundled together are the DC lines. So we're going to go ahead and hook these up to the power supply on the new terminals. I'm going to unscrew the line neutral and ground screw terminals on the new power supply as well as one of the V plus and one of the V minus so I can go ahead and slip these under. Remembering which is which is very important like I said before. So these are going to go to our line neutral and ground and these will go to the ground V minus and V plus. The red goes to line Black goes to neutral. And when we put the ground wire in, because we have the AC wire and we have the DC ground wire, you have to make sure you get both of them into the same screw terminal. If you do not, then it's not going to work correctly. So I'm going to go ahead and put the two ground wires in, just like they were on the stock power supply. You can see there, they're both in there. The last two wires we have to hook up are the V plus and the V minus. So the black wire goes to the V minus and the red wire goes to V plus. Just double check that you have your connections correct. The ones coming off the AC receptacle should go to the line neutral and ground. And then the ones going to this three pin plug should be going to the V plus, V minus, and then the yellow going to the ground lead. If yours looks like this, go ahead and slide the power supply into the new housing. Pull this out as you're doing so. Flip it around, and we're going to go ahead and put two of the four screws that we took out of the stock power supply in through the back here. Just make sure that the screw holes are lined up in the housing with the housing holes. So I'm going to go ahead and screw these in. So now we have the new power supply assembled. We have the new Meanwell in here with our custom cover. The receptacle is into the new housing. We have our DC power coming out the bottom. Go ahead and make sure that this is in the off position. So the next thing you need to do is make sure that you set the voltage switch to the correct voltage for your country. These all come set to 230 volts. I'm in the US, so I'm gonna make sure that this is set to the 115 setting, just like that. And now with that all done, we can go ahead and put this back on the printer plug this cable back in and then we're done. So go ahead and put one of the screws through the holes and then put the other one in the bottom here. And we're gonna go ahead and screw the power supply on. Make sure the holes line up with the one on the power supply. Go ahead and reconnect your power cable. Plug the power back in. Turn it on. You can see here the printer is booting up with the new power supply. I can go ahead and check that it homes correctly. We're going to go ahead and heat the bed and the hot end just to put a load on the power supply to make sure it all works. And you can see here everything's heating as it should. And there we go. Now my power supply is upgraded with a meanwhile. I don't have to worry about it dying on me or causing any sort of other electrical issues. I hope this video was clear and concise to show you guys how to swap this out. This is actually probably one of the easiest modifications to do to this printer. We will be coming out with other modifications and upgrades for the SVO6 Plus. So stay tuned to our channel and our website for any further updates. Thank you guys for watching and as always, happy printing.